the board is a travel on an accreditation team looking at, at another college. It uh, makes me so much appreciate where I am and what I'm doing. I want to extend my very best thanks to our students who have gone to a great deal of effort and time to make sure we have a high quality candidate forum this evening. Uh, tonight's event is going to be co-moderated by members of our student government, Adam Fulosi and Melissa McFeeder. So with no further ado, I'll turn it over to them. Again, thank you very much, ASCMC. Hi everyone, welcome to the 2012 Board of Trustees Candidate Forum. Uh, I'd like to give special thanks to Dr. Wagner for being here, uh, Vice President Dr. Zoe, uh, Vice, uh, Vice President Mr. Brown, Retiring Trustee Owen Gillick, we appreciate your service, and also Councilman Lombardo for being here. My name is Adam Pelosi, I'm a student trustee here at Copper Mountain College. My name is Melissa McPeters, and I am a senator on the Associated Students for Copper Mountain College. And we will be co-hosting tonight's forum. And now it is our pleasure to introduce you to the candidates for the Board of Trustees, and hear their opening statements, beginning with Dr. Rita ramirez -Dean. I have to stand up. I never sat down when I was a teacher, and I'm sorry I'm not going to start now. So, in terms of standing, let me simply say, my name is Dr. Rita Ramirez-Dean. I have been with this college since October of 1972. I have been involved with this college in that I developed Department of Foreign Languages, so the students did not have to go to Palm Desert. I developed the Department of Reading, also for the same for DevEd. I was five years aboard the base, and there I developed the government and the English portion for the GED, and also for the high school diploma, and I taught the CLEP to the uh, enlisted and the officers. In regards to myself, I'm highly educated. I hold a bachelor's, a master's, an educational specialist, and a PhD, a doctor of philosophy. I have 12 years of university education. I'm qualified in nine areas, and they are mathematics, history, political science, sociology, Spanish, business, administration, curriculum, and reading. I hold six credentials, two in public school and four life credentials in community college. I have been a trustee for six years and presently I am the vice president of the Board of Trustees. I am the director of Area F for the San Bernardino County School Board Association and I oversee all the community colleges in San Bernardino County. I hold a GPA of 3.7 and as a faculty member I sat on CTA for uh, executive board for five years. I introduced the honors program to this campus. I brought foreign travel as a part of the uh, Department of Foreign Languages. And I was the grievance officer for CTA and fought the battles for the faculty, the staff, and the students for 10 years. I taught for 38 years, so I do know something about community college. I do know something about the community here. But beyond that, I was also outside of the class. I was the faculty advisor of CMC Hispanic, Club for from 1983 through 99. I was the faculty advisor for BSU, Black Student Union, at College of the Desert, and for Mecha. I introduced the Latinas of the California Community College and gave scholarships to all those who were members of each of these clubs that I was an advisor to. So I have been a member not only of the college and outside for students, but in the community. I am the vice president of the Chicano Latino Caucus of the in an empire. I belong to the NAACP of the Riverside chapter. I belong to the uh, Rainbow Coalition of Reverend Jackson. I'm very much involved both politically as well as educational. What do I believe? I am a lifelong student, so I believe in education, pre-K to higher education. I believe in financial aid, and I think that academics and vocational education are equal. I'm here to tell you that the doors will remain open because education is important to each and every one of you. And without it, it will be a tragedy. So therefore, let's simply say, I hope that you will consider me and vote for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mr. Greg, you go. I think I'll just stay on this side of the table. Does the microphone pick me up okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I should start by pointing out that uh, I'm hard of hearing, so I may have to ask people to repeat things. 
from time to time. I was playing with my granddaughter a couple of years ago, popped a little paper bag, and lost 40% of my hearing. Um, and I guess it goes back to when I was on the police department years ago. The uh, fire, fire personnel and police personnel have this kind of deafness that comes from not having ear protection. And so time of the firing range and clanks and some things like that. Um, anyway, uh, I guess first I want to thank uh, student government, the Associated Students and uh, Professor Norton for hosting this tonight. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, the way I see myself is that I'm one of those people who sort of walks the talk. Um, I've been an educator, a full-time English teacher for 25 years. Uh, I retired from Copper Mountain after teaching here for about 15 years. I've now been teaching part-time for almost two years since then. And during the years that I was here, um, I was active in the classroom and beyond the classroom uh, at our college, in our local community, and at the state. In terms of the classroom, I taught just about every subject in English and communications and enjoyed it a great deal. Um, I looked forward to coming to work every day. I loved my work. Uh, in terms of the campus, I started a literary magazine named Tal, and it was about 100 pages. We got it out every single year. This was volunteer work for 15 years. And so I'm very proud of that. It's a, a good quality magazine, and it's continued since I retired. Um, I was the foundation coordinator for um, cultural events for 14 or 15 years and brought, I don't know, how many dozens of speakers and authors to the campus. And I did that because I know as a student, being part of a campus where there was a cultural life really uh, influenced my becoming uh, a better student and eventually someone who continued with his education. I eventually served on the school board here in Morongo Basin and was its president for a term. Uh, I have been the statewide curriculum chair and I was the founder of the Accreditation Institute uh, for all of California's community colleges, which now serves 112 colleges a year. So I've been walking the talk and I want to continue to walk it uh, at our college board. Thank you. Thank you. Now for Mr. Dick Rogers. Well, thank you. And uh, Dr. Norton, thank you for putting this together and the students. It's great. Uh, I think I'll just start off just by saying that uh, my whole goal is, as far as being a uh, trustee is student success and whatever we can do to make or allow the students to be successful is a goal of mine. I had uh, utmost faith in the community college. I had two daughters that graduated here. Uh, one went on for a master's degree and has done very well in her life. The other one is doing well too, but she didn't pursue the education beyond the, the associate degree. I, I like to look at myself as being uh, honest and fair. And in that light, I think that's one reason that I was uh, endorsed by the California School Employees Association, the local here. Uh, as far as the, uh, my background, I started here several years ago about the time that uh, Dr. Ramirez Dean began. Uh, I was a counselor. I taught psychology and a little bit of mathematics. Uh, I became the uh, director of the BASE program. And there, I instituted the five-week courses that was real successful and met the needs of the servicemen that were there. In fact, at one time, we had uh, almost 30% of the population was out on the base. <coughs> I also was director of student services here, and uh, Greg knows all about that. Uh, as far as uh, what's involved there, you were talking about uh, financial aid, counseling, transcripts, transfer, uh, ES disabled students, EOPS. And that was, uh, I found that to be quite fulfilling to me. And it gives me an idea that, you know, I know pretty much how a community college works. I've been on the board for two terms now. Uh, I'm running for the third. 
uh, during my tenure, um, a lot of things that contribute to student success have happened. Uh, the building that we're in right now, the Bell Center, the, uh, nurse, uh, the nursing labs, and also we have uh, really accelerated the nursing program. The RN, LVM, EMT, uh, nursing assistant, and home health aid, one of our stellar areas. We also uh, uh, are redoing the library, as you can see, and uh, we installed solar and are working on more of that. And I've just been given to stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I appreciate your vote and the upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is Miss Mary Lombardo. Why vote for me, Mary Lombardo, on November 6th? The truth. There are three seats open and four of us. The truth. These three opponents of mine are well qualified and will do a good job if elected to the board. The truth. That all three have worked at Copper Mountain College. But what I want and will bring is something different, a different perspective. A perspective not only as a parent of a college-age student, but also as an employer and community advocate. My Bachelor of Science degree is in dental hygiene, and I have worked as a dental hygienist locally in 29 Palms, Joshua Tree, and Yucca Valley. I own and run Lombardo Family Dentistry with my husband which employs 15 Morongo Basin residents, many of whom are currently attending or have graduated from Copper Mountain College. I've been closely involved in community service with the Kiwanis Club and their high school program, the Key Club. My drive for educational excellence spans all age groups, and that is why my service to the board is necessary. My personal service to my family is waning, as I have two children that are in college presently. My daughter attended CMC during high school and now is a sophomore at a four-year college. My son is a senior and has been attending classes at CMC throughout his high school career. He will graduate this June with over 40 college credits that will transfer to a four-year university. As you can see, my family does have a passion for education. This fuels me not to only see my own kids pursue and succeed in higher education, but it also fuels me to help others in this community to do so as well. I have seen many students miss out on the educational opportunities available to them. It was this reason that prompted me to begin mentoring individual students in their academic pursuits. I feel that by myself, I have made a small impact, but together we will make a greater impact. I may not have the experience that my opponents have, but I know I can do this job, and I want to do this job for the students in my community. Thank you. Thank you. The rules of the night for the audience are as follows. Please turn off all electronic devices. Please do not interrupt the candidates. And please hold all applause. You can submit your questions on note cards to the ASCMC committee by the door when we reach the intermission. Rules for the candidates. Candidates will be allowed up to two minutes to answer each question and up to three minutes for a closing statement. Are there any questions? Thank you. From 6 to 7, we will have questions generated by a subcommittee of ASCMC. There will be a 15 minute intermission at 7 p.m. When we resume, candidates will be asked questions generated by the audience. If you look to our right, ASCMC Senator Scott Rutherford will be displaying time signals. When he displays the green card, that means you have one minute left to answer your question. When he displays a yellow, signal, that means you have 30 seconds remaining. 
and the pink signal, yes, we didn't have a red, will be 10 seconds. <laughs> Keep in mind that immediately after a question is asked, there will be an opportunity for clarification. <coughs> the first question of the night. Why are you interested in being elected or re-elected as a member of the Board of Trustees, and what do you hope to accomplish if you are elected? Does everyone understand this question? Then we will begin with Dr. Vita Ramirez. Thank you very much. Why am I interested? I believe in students. I believe they should have accessibility, equal opportunity, and affirmative action. I think that every person who wants to do what they know is right for them should have the opportunity and the ability to come to school. Many times we think that if we don't do well in high school, you can't come to college. Well, the answer is you can come at any time, and you're never too old to come to school. What do I hope to accomplish? I would like for us to say that we will be able to give higher education. I want to be able to provide not only the basic skills here at this college, but the, in, the aspiration to say we need to have more education offered, more programs, more of everything. Why? We may be small, but you know we're private. And we're so small is that you are so lucky that you get individual help. I always brag about this college because your teachers know who you are and they care. And so my hope is to bring more of everything and eventually I would like to see Cal State San Bernardino right across the street and have a center so that we have accessibility without having to go to San Bernardino because this community can be able to, should be able to receive their BA here and within our own community. My hope is to have higher education, that we will be the first two years and right across the street, we are going to be able to offer to our community the next two to three years. The BA, the MA, the teaching credential. So that's my hope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now Mr. Greg Gilbert. Well, years ago when I came to this college, I moved to this community and I, I went to the store and I heard people talk about how they had built a college in their own community, their college. And I love the feeling that we have in this community a first, anywhere, a foundation that was established ahead of the building of the college and a college that was inspired by local activism. Believe it or not, it was a quilt that got this college going to some extent. Several women put a quilt together and it inspired the rotaries to get involved, money to be raised. Um, I understand that there was even a little um, grading exercise done by the local Marine Corps that came out and voila, we had our college on the way out here and people attending it. I just uh, couldn't believe my good fortune to be hired by this college and to be in the middle of a dream like this that was coming through. Um, part of the reason that I worked on developing Howl Magazine, one reason I was um, the faculty advisor for Associated Students for years, um, a reason that I have uh, brought speakers to the campus and been involved in education at all levels is because of the inspiration derived by being at this college. Uh, now that I've retired, I know a lot of people uh, want to sit in front of the television or perfect their golf game, but my dream is to continue working for the campus and to make sure that our college remains the cultural center of our community, part of an energetic, ongoing conversation that is central to the dream of its founders at this school, I think. That's my ambition. That's my personal dream. Thank you. Mr. Dick Rogers? I started, uh, as I mentioned, some years back, and it's just kind of uh, grown on me. Uh, I like working with students. I've uh, helped students uh, uh, plan their programs, and I think it started even back further than that. I was like a lot of our students here today when I grew up. Uh, I was 18 years old, and I thought I, I, thought I wanted to go to college, and then uh, 
Uh, about six months later, uh, I made perhaps a, a mistake by getting married and having a child, and and then starting off. And it, I didn't have the support of my parents because my dad was out of work. And so I worked full time in the grocery store for eight years to get a degree. And I'd like to kind of uh, put, put that in uh, perspective with students that I've talked to and I've counseled in the past. The whole idea is, you know, you stick to it, enough. you've got to stay with something if you're going to reach a goal. And I feel real strong about that, and I think maybe that's driven me to uh, just continue on. Uh, I was an advisor uh, for a number of years. I did a lot of that on the base, too. And I, I guess it's just kind of a real personal thing with me. And I like students to have success. As I mentioned, that's my goal for students to have success. And we can establish methods of them to get success, whether it be our, our uh, high school completion program or our uh, uh, ESL program, whatever it might be to get there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Ms. Mary Labarga. I'm interested in being elected on the board of trustees because I want to be with a group of people that share the same vision as I do, which is to educate the students in the Morongo Basin. I've been a cheerleader for this school for many years, not only for what they've done for my kids, but passing along, passing the information on to other students and getting them excited about the school. And I want to continue to do that and let students know they have options and choices here and continue the great quality of education that is present. What will I accomplish? If I'd like to. Um, I already know one thing that I have been working on and I want to continue is the reputation of this college. And it's pretty good, but I'd like to see it a lot better, especially with the students. So I personally want to be working on that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Question two. What distinguishes you from the other candidates, and how will this contribute to the board? Starting with Mr. Greg Gilbert. Well, I think we all bring unique and distinct backgrounds to this effort. Um, I have been in the classroom continually over the years, and I'm still in the classroom. I came here from a class today, even though I'm retired. It's uh, a nice profession because you can teach part-time. So um, I've continued to teach. And I, I think that I have a good sense of where students are at today and the issues that they're facing. Um, I think that my involvement at the college over the years makes me unique in terms of student government and uh, being one of the founders of our academic senate. Um, I think that my involvement at the state makes me absolutely unique. Uh, I was on the executive committee of the state academic senate, and that's the umbrella organization for all academic and professional uh, work that is done by faculty throughout the state. And while I was there, as I mentioned before, I was the chair of curriculum and I started the accreditation uh, commit, uh, institute that serves uh, 112 colleges every year. I, have, I worked with K-12 when I served on their board I've done program reviews for 10 of the schools in our system. I think I have a good sense of the system top to bottom and its students at the same time. So what I'm bringing is a, a lifetime of experience to, uh, to this position. And again, just the desire to serve our community where I live and our students. Thank you. Mr. Rogers. I think what makes me a little bit different than the rest is I have a variety of experience uh, being in student services, dealing with students there, running programs out on the base, and, and, and talking with our base students. And I think my background, too, uh, working and going to school, I can emphasize with the, with the students. And it gives you a little different perspective, too, uh, as far as uh, business and education. 
I, I think you'll learn a lot of new business. You get a lot of uh, uh, customer um, skills, I guess, how to deal with people, and everybody's not happy all the time with you. Right now, I have a business also, a small business in Palm Springs that my wife and I have. And just, uh, as I said, just a little bit different perspective on uh, on education, besides my background with uh, with the district. Um, I, I think all of us are, are so much different, it's rather uh, kind, of, kind of difficult to say. Um, I, I think I can relate with people. I do well in small groups talking with people. Our board that we have right now is is a, a, a real homogeneous board. We all um, work for the common good, a very tight organization. Uh, I know when Mr. Gilly is leaving the board, uh, at a, a recent meeting he had mentioned that uh, he had been on several boards and that our board was the best board that he had been served on. And, I, I don't know, we just all have our own perspective. Thank you. Ms. Lombardo? Um, the first thing that comes to mind, what distinguishes me from the other candidates, I would say, is everything I've done in education has been volunteering. As a parent, as a key club advisor, as a mentor to the kids in the community. So that does give me a different background. And I will still continue to be active with the kids in the community. And that will bring some insight into the board. Also, I am very active in the community. And they have a lot of questions. Just by campaigning, I've realized how many questions they don't know and, they, and what they want to know. So I will be a direct link for them as well as everyone else will be. Um, and as an employer, I actually hire people that go to school here. And so I think I have a different perspective there that will bring to the board what's needed out in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rita Ramirez. Well, number one, I'm a student. <laughs> and I'm just like you. I believe in school. I believe going to school is one of the best things that we can do because we all learn from each other. And I believe that not only do you have to attend college or a class, but you need to be a part of the community. I believe in participating. I believe in being seen and promoting the college, both locally as well as the state. I was the member of the, I was a governor at large for the FACC, representing Southern California and this college for over three to four years. I also was the secretary of the Latino trustees of the state of California. And I, uh, we read the, uh, the so-called manual for the trustees of the state of California. So my involvement has always been beyond the board because I believe that one of the things that we need to bring back to our college is to bring ideas that have been presented in other schools by other people so that we are a part of the whole, not the isolated little community that people seem to believe that we are. We are a part of the world. And because of that fact, I believe in participation. And what do I contribute? I contribute perspectives, not only of one culture, but of all cultures. Because I believe in being a member. I belong to the Asian American business. I belong to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I also belong to various societies that bring culture. Why? Because if we learn from others, we can also bring those new ideas to expand our community academically in terms of what our students should have and know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question number three. How might we as a college best build a relationship with the community? Mr. Dick Rogers. I think our reputation is what uh, builds our relationships out in the community. We all need to do the very best that we can, send students out that are successful, that they will tell other students, and we can gain uh, 
a, a perspective in that regard. And, and I think uh, another thing that we, we need to, as far as our students are concerned, right now we, uh, in, in conjunction with the, uh, with the foundation, we, there's a major campaign to obtain money for a student center here on the campus. And uh, I've made contribution to that fund already. And I think that if, if we could have that coming together of the students, more students would want to come here. Uh, I can't imagine a college uh, without a community center. And right now, what we're doing is just meeting there down here at the cafeteria, and it's just not big enough. And it's just a real problem. And probably your students know that better than anyone else. So I think that would be a, 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 a real uh, draw for the college. Also, uh, a little more, if, if we could get together a little more with the high school, I remember uh, my daughter, uh, I told her that she had to come here, she wanted to go elsewhere, and they had a Hall of Fame down here at uh, Yucca High School. But the only way that you could get on that Hall of Fame was that if you were going and, and accepted to a, or said that you were going to a four-year institution. And so we need to get rid of that stigma too and show that students can be successful starting here at community college and moving on. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mary Lombardo. Best to build a better relationship with the community. Well, one thing that a lot of the community members asked me was they want to use the Bell Center more. So that is one way to bring them here and and to use the gym. They want the gym. They talk about it. So, um, so bringing more things here, maybe like a uh, I think of a co-ed intramural volleyball team to bring people in for healthy things, exercising, maybe some music events. We bring them here and they start getting a closer relationship. But what I think is the relationship needs to start at the high school. And the transition from high school to here is where it's so important. And I think that's where we can work a little bit more on that. And as an advocate for the college, I will be doing that. Thank you. Dr. Rio Ramirez? Well, the best way to build a relationship, number one, is to support your college, especially through the foundation. Since 1980, well, from 1983 through 1999, every month I donated, gave money to the friends of our college. Why? Because they were there for us. Our community has always supported us, so I believe in partnership. I believe that you have to extend yourself beyond what your role or your responsibility may be. I try to attend as many events that I can afford, right? <laughs> it's a tough time, but I think that when you go out of a college and you represent the community, the students, especially the students, because we also always want people to know that our students are doing their very best and they were there for them. So partnerships is very important. Joining the Chamber of Commerce is very important. All the chambers that you possibly can. I believe in supporting the hospital. I believe in supporting the foundation. But I also believe that we need to go on beyond our own community so that we can build a better relationship. I've attended various conferences and conventions, and I've uh, approached various labor unions about what can you do for our students, such as in vocational education. Can you help us with your expertise? Would you be willing to support us financially or even by a, being a part of our staff, trying to find out. So the best way is to talk to each other, to communicate, and to say, what do we need and what can we do for you? I was a United Way volunteer. And when I went to the staff, they said, well, how much do you want? I said, I take anything. I'm not from the church. I take whatever you give me. So as a result, it was, that year that I did it was 100%. So it can be done when people believe in what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Greg Gilbert. Well, I think this uh, college has the potential to really be at the center of a vital ongoing conversation with the community. And it can be at so many different levels. 
Um, one of my central issues has been culture. Um, having a speaker series, having authors here, having art shows. I'd like to see the college participate even more actively with the local studio tours, things of that nature. Uh, I think there's so many um, vital discussions going on in our community, uh, things that have to do with the environment, uh, the issue about putting windmills on the buttes and things like that. I would like to see conversations and workshops uh, taking place at our college. I'd like the college to be at the center of those conversations. And I certainly agree that uh, we need to get out into the community more and support one another at the various foundations. Um, I think we have a, uh, an excellent president, who, uh, and Roger Wagner, who gets out into the community, knows the various organizations, and I think he's done a great job of revitalizing this college's place in the community. I think supporting the foundation is vital. I've been with the foundation for 14 or 15 years. I'm an honorary lifetime member. And I have to say that the amount of good that they do is just staggering in terms of helping students with scholarships um, and paying for all of the cultural events that we've had over the years. Uh, it's a remarkable organization, and it's an extension of what the friends and the founders uh, started. Um, I guess the idea of a student newspaper, I'd like to see that happen. Again, because an online student newspaper reaches into the community and gets attention. And people read it who aren't just students here. Um, I think supporting um, uh, the, the Christmas efforts in the community to feed families and provide gifts. There's so many things that we can do that just keep us at the center of the community and in an ongoing sort of meta conversation. Uh, I'd just like to see us involved in that effort. Thank you. Question four. Currently, the foundation does great work with the college and students. For example, they often send students to conferences and support on-campus events. How will you work to support the foundation and its mission? Any clarification needed on this question? Okay, we're going to be start start with you, Ms. Mary Lombardo. Um, I feel that I'm going to be very active in the future with the foundation. I have a lot of friends that are on it. Here tonight, and it's very important. The way it was explained to me is that the money that they raise, they can choose what they want to do for the school versus when you get funding from the state and stuff. So you can go specifically to the needs of the school. So it's kind of exciting, and I will be a huge part of that. I feel. Thank you, Dr. Reader. Yes. Well, as I said to you. Um, once we became, we decided that we were going to become a college, I felt as a professor, being here since 1972, that the only way I could help at that time was to give money, and I gave money from 83 through 99. But I continued by also donating not only money, but also dedicating myself to supporting and speaking about things that we need. For example, I just gave money for the Student Activity Center. I've been talking about that for the last 25, 30 years, saying students need a place to go that would be nice without being out in the cold. So let me say that um, money will come and money has already been promised to them and I have already said that I would, as soon as I sell my property, as they say, um, a, a donation of 25000 will be given by me. But in light, let me say, we can support the foundation by believing in what their mission is, and that is to promote education, to promote scholarships. And I've always believed, as a student, that students always need money, and they always need help. And every penny that one gives for the support of another student is a wonderful dedication. Why? Because from the least comes the most. From the least student that you expect, the one that's having difficulty, but who receives that one dollar means the difference of staying in school. So I say to you that by supporting the foundation, not only by money, but by time, by dedication, and by verbal support, talking about the goodness that they do, 
people will then support them even more so. So I encourage you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Greg Gilbert? I think I've probably spent more of the resources than I've donated, uh, but I've, uh, I've been a cheerleader for the foundation for years, and every author's event at everything I host tonight. I thank them for all that they've done and try to continue to tell the story of their founding. Uh, two years ago at the fall dinner, I put together a PowerPoint and showed it to the room. And, and really, I want to keep that story alive because it's a story of hope and of dreams that can get lost over time if it isn't told and retold. Uh, one of the earliest ways I spent the resources was working with uh, Owen Gillick when I first came to the college uh, and Beverly Willard, who was then, I think, the president of the school board. And we brought in people from UCR, Cal State San Bernardino, from the local K-12 system in our college, and for several years, we worked on establishing a language arts portfolio system. We took a good look at assessment. We brought in luminaries on the subject. And it was something that was approved uh, by the majority of teachers in the school district. It was a beautiful program. Um, sad to say, it was killed by No Child Left Behind. No Child Left Behind showed up at the school when it was over. But the strides that we made as teachers working together from universities, all the way through K-12, this had lasting value. And I think all those who participate in it were grateful to the foundation for investing in the work that we did. Um, I know with the Green Leaf, Leaf Scholarships and uh, with the work filling in the uh, Bell Center, uh, the list is just about endless. That it isn't just doing capital projects, but it's about doing the small things that matter in the lives of individuals at the, at the college. Uh, I'm just going to continue to be a cheerleader for the foundation. Thank you. Mr. Dick Rogers. Yeah, I think the foundation is one of the greatest things that's happened here to this college. Uh, it, as Mary had, had alluded to, uh, the foundation can do things that the college cannot do. Uh, they can provide funds for directed areas for particular programs. Uh, they can send the students off to other universities. And many times the college doesn't have the money to do that. So they're a great, uh, a great participant here. Uh, uh, I contribute uh, through payroll deduction to the uh, of foundation right now. I think all of us could do that, and that would and be surprised how many faculty members are doing that at the current time, and it just compounds itself. And we have a great leader now in Sandy Smith through the foundation. I know I, I was doing this payroll deduction way back when, and, and I thought, well, heck, nobody seems to worry about it or care about it. And, and as soon as she got on, she sent me a note saying, oh, how we appreciate that. And, it just makes you want to help and continue on. I think if we could get leads from the community too, and people that can contribute uh, sums of money is a great thing. I know Owen was good at that back in his day. And uh, there, there are some other items too. Uh, we had something called uh, Land to School or Land to College where we can get people that have land that uh, maybe they don't know what to do with or whatever, contributed to the college, and then the college can sell that land and continue on. I remember one thing I did years ago was to build a house in one day over here in 29 Palms. Brought a lot of uh, spirit and uniqueness and money into the college. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. The final question for part one. Many people have biases regarding community college students. If elected, how will you address your own biases and the biases of others? Are there, is there any clarification needed for this? We'll start with Dr. Rita Ramirez. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I don't know what the biases may be regarding community college students because Number one, at one time, community college was free. And it was like saying, if you really want education, all you have to go is to a community college. Our reputation is very good. 
And our students have reputations are very good because when they transfer, they do well. And they have a high GPA. So in regards to my biases, is that I'm here for every student. I'm colorblind. I see no color. I see no age. I see nothing but a student who needs help. And so when people say about community college students, I say, hey, they are there because they want to learn. And those who come, they do well. They dedicate themselves to a life of change, I said. And they open their eyes to the possibilities that education will bring. So my own bias in it is, I believe in students. <laughs> and nobody's ever going to change that. I'm sorry. And if I, if I have to do something and fight for students, I will be the first one up there to fight for you because I know that I had teachers who believed in me and they fought for me and gave me their best education that I could have received. And I'm grateful to this day because I certainly would not be here if they had felt that as a minority student, I did not belong. Let me say, I was the only Hispanic woman at Chapman University for five years. So I know how it is to be the only one. But then when I became a teacher, I was the only one. And when you see this board, I am still the only one. <laughs> so the point is, education is freedom of thought. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Greg Gilbert? Well, I started out as a community college student and uh, did miserably. Um, uh, I was out of high school and uh, had a girlfriend and a fast car, and I just didn't really find this very well. Uh, a couple of years down the road, I was ready, and I came back, and uh, it made all the difference. It was teachers who had worked with me. It was people who saw past the rough edges and saw that maybe something in here was actually worth developing, uh, and they stuck with me. And that's lasted for me as a teacher. Uh, sometimes you get students who are just so wonderfully gifted. You find them in their cla in your classroom, sitting next to students who are struggling, students who are like me. And I know that our job at this level is to be there for all of them, provide the resources and the support. Uh, in terms of a bias, uh, I do have a strong bias for the community college system, for its policy of open enrollment for the fact that it serves virtually every need that California has to, to produce workers, uh, from police officers to teachers to dental hygienists to anybody who wants to work out there. They, if they pass through us, they get a real good deal because the first two years is the same thing they would get at a university. In terms of how I feel about a bias in our community, I know Yucca Valley High School has a wall that celebrates those students who graduate from their high school and go to universities. I think they should be celebrating those students who go to CMC, and we need to get the word out there that this is the place to go. If you can understand how this little college operates, it's just the university boiled down. If you can go to a university and understand how it operates, you'll get the help you need here to go somewhere else and succeed afterwards. I want students to come here and recognize this is a great deal. Thank you. Mr. Dick Rogers? Well, when I uh, started the school in New Mexico, there weren't any community colleges. And I ended up there at the University of New Mexico and felt like a real outsider. Yeah, I didn't know anyone there. It, it's just a real, uh, it, it makes, it's kind of a fearful place, quite frankly. And so I think the community colleges are the place to start off. They're, they're small, they're welcoming. Uh, and, and it, it, it gives a, a, a better sense of being to the student for the student's success. And, and that, as I mentioned before, is my whole goal is student success. I think I would work with the counselors at the uh, high school level. I know we've, we've done this in the past. I'd like to get that wall of uh, fame changed so that uh, community colleges would be on there. And, and I've talked about that many a time, too. Uh, my bias, too, uh, reached its right at home, as I mentioned. I, I know my daughter, gosh, she wanted to go to the four-year institution like nobody else. And she had the GPA to do it. And uh, I just insisted. I said, no, you're going to go to the community college. And she came over here. 
did well in your classes <laughs> and, uh, and and went on uh, to uh, Texas Tech University for a bachelor with uh, with honors and uh, received her master's degree out here at uh, Cal State at San Bernardino uh, with honors also. So you can get that, you can get everything here at the community college that required. And I've done uh, many educational plans. Students don't lose credits when they transfer. If they talk to the counselor and work out a program, they know where they're going to go, and uh, it can fit in just uh, perfectly. And that's it. Thank you. Ms. Mary Lombardo. Um, during my mentoring with students, uh, the first question I see a student is, oh, what, what are you thinking of doing after high school? And a lot of them don't know what they're doing, or the reply would be, I'm just going to Copper Mountain College. Ugh, and that would just drive me nuts. I'm like, it should be that it's, it should be an informed decision and it's your choice and be happy about it. They have so much to offer at this college. And as my kids started going here, I could tell them more things about it and how I fell in love with this college and what it's done for my children and how many doors it has opened up. And the diversity here that they get to experience. Um, so I think by talking about it, what wonderful things it does have, we can get rid of that just Copper Mountain mm -hmm. College. Um, and with the cost of college increasing, we're going to start to see a lot more kids coming through. And I think they're going to start to appreciate it more. Um, we have to work on getting the word out on wonderful these places. Thank you. At this time, we'll take a 15 minute intermission. So, everybody should be back here by 7 10, please. If you have any questions that you've written down, you can hand them to Dr. Norton as you go on your way out. The bathrooms are through the gymnasium, go through the two double doors, the two doors that are open through the gym. No, but we can. Thank <laughs> you.